Okay, so we need to talk a little bit about non-idealities of operational amplifiers. Some of the op amps um, I selected I thought should work within the frequency ranges, but I, I didn't have time to check everything. And so rather than have you redo a lot of work, I'm just going to do some explanations of why you're seeing what you're seeing. And then for this week, what you should be able to do to fix it. So what I have here is my LT Spice file, right? And I just want to make one more edit here, is that I'm controlling the gain with a variable RF here. The, the capacitors and resistor to set the low pass cutoff frequency are variables, which then I calculate omega naught, I calculate the gain. The simulation time is five um, times tau, and then even the upper and lower limits of the Bode plot um, I take to two orders of magnitude above and below. And so based on 16K and one nano farad, the cutoff frequency should be at 10 kilohertz. The green one is the actual circuit, and that's about 17, uh, 20 minus 17. That's the minus 3 dB point. The phase is a little bit off. Should be closer to 5.5. And also, the cutoff frequency isn't exactly... 10 kilohertz because I rounded up to a standard uh, resistor value. All right, everything's a standard resistor value. Now, what you would notice, and this is a an old part, um, is that it seems to match the low the DC gain or the low frequency gain matches. Uh, the cutoff frequency is pretty good uh, matching, but now the op amp and the the check are deviating. And that's because inside this op amp, there's a capacitor that is limiting the frequency of that open loop gain. If you recall from your circuits class, an ideal op amp has an infinite open loop gain. This isn't true in real op amps. It's a large number, but this large number goes uh, towards one and even less than, you know, uh, even starts to attenuate the higher the frequency. And so if I wanted to know what that relationship would be, I'd right click on that part and go to Analog's website, click on the data sheet, zoom in, they have some scroll down and what I'm looking for is the open loop gain, and that's the large signal gain at DC. And it's 800 volts per millivolt, so that's really 800 times 1,000, which is pretty close to infinite, especially when the gain we're going for is 10. However, this, this number drops with frequency, and that's the gain bandwidth product, and that is 800 kilohertz. Now that doesn't mean that it stops working at 800 kilohertz, right? What that means is the open loop gain of that op amp, that, that thing we're always setting to infinite is actually one at, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 800 kilohertz, all right? So if I come back to our spice simulation, all right, um, 0 dB, let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? This is the gain we want, right? But the op amp has stopped working. And it's actually because the, the open loop gain is, is not greater than the gain we're looking for. And you can start to see that it deviates, right, before that. And even the phase is showing it where the ideal phase of a low pass first order filter goes from zero to minus 90. Right? You can see that the phase is, is dropping off and it's, 
because inside there's other capacitors, all right? Now, the thing is, is the higher the gain, the bigger the problem, all right? So in fact, if I just set a gain of two, all right, you see that it matches for more frequency range, a larger frequency range, all right? And I can actually set, if I set a RF to something like 0 0.01, that's effectively zero, which is like a wire, and so the gain would become one, all right? And so you can see that it, it matches pretty well, all right? And then maybe the frequency is too high. So I can increase the capacitor value, all right, and run it. Now notice the cutoff frequency is at 100 hertz. That's because I'm automatically scaling these upper and lower limits with variables, all right? But now it works everywhere. Now, what are you going to do? All right, you, you've got an a spec and you're not, you know, in this circumstance, you're not really allowed to change it, right? So, you know, even though yeah, it's, it's working in all regimes, right, for uh, 20 dB of gain, right? We really, in this particular example, we're going for a 10 kilohertz cutoff frequency, all right? So the only thing you can do is actually use op amps with better or bigger open loop gains, like the 1630. And right there, the gain bandwidth is 30 megahertz instead of 800 kilohertz. All right. So you can switch back to that. Now, some of you will have op amps that work, and some you're going to have to, to change, right? Um, it was a little unexpected on my part. I thought I had selected op amps that would work in all the ranges. All right. This particular lab. Um, you just need to know that some op amps have a higher frequency range than other op amps, all right? And this is really as good as it's going to get, and you just know that this deviation is due to the fact that it's a non-ideal non op amp. Now, there are there is something that came up in simulation that... Uh, surprised me because I thought LT Spice didn't cover it, and that is in the transient simulation or the step response. All right, so I have my simulation time automatically set to five tau. All right, so now I'm just going to run that. Oop, that semicolon was is a is like a comment. Now I'm gonna run that. It'll just ask me which simulation I wanna run. I want that. And we see that there is this DC offset with this part, right? And just so you know, VN is going from zero to 0 0.1, right? And so because that peak is, um, 0.1 is, is smaller, you're seeing this, this offset. So if you want to improve it, try to make it as large as possible. So in this case, the gain is 10, uh, I have 15 and a gain of 10, All right? So the biggest thing I can see is um, 15 divided by 10 or 1.5, right? But that will be exactly on the rail, right? So let me do 1.4, right? And now it looks like it matches perfectly and the transient goes up to 14 volts.
Now, yes, if I zoom in here, you'll see some things going on because this is not an ideal op amp and there is that offset, right? So you don't really have to switch the part. You can increase the voltage supplies and um, try to increase the peak. Um, in the past, this effect, which is something we study in 122, um, wasn't simulated. Well, now it's being simulated and I'm just telling you how to, to work around it, all right? Um, so if you had an op amp that wasn't working, what you can do is describe what happened, all right? You can include a plot and then, and then we had to switch to, you know, 1630, Right, and um, and that should cover it. All right now, also, um, yeah. If if I want to do a sine wave, uh, let's see. All right, I put in one point four frequency. Um, All right, 10 kilohertz, All right, and I run it, I'm not getting the full sine wave, All right? I have to actually see, I have to change my simulation time for longer, All right? Which is where? So I can just come back here and say, uh, Instead of five tau, make it 10, something like that, right? Now I can see that, and, it, and it's matching, that's good. Um, there's the input, and so you can take the ratio of these two gains, the peak and the peak, calculate the log, and that'll give you the magnitude of one spot on the Bode plot, and then notice this is lagging that. You've measured the delay and scale it to 360 degrees and that'll give you your phase it'll be negative right um, if I were to do make it smaller right it's actually the phase is still is practically zero right the gain is still 10 but that's because of that part of the Bode plot. It is, uh, it's not attenuating yet, All right? And then if I did, let's see, 100K. Well, now, you know, what's going on here? Well, that part of the Bode plot, the gain is actually less than one. And so it's actually smaller than the input. Right, so you're getting a negative dB, and then if you really want to see that even more, okay, and um, something I want to point out is that you'll see this start and then eventually decay. And that's really because this is the Laplace transform and it starts at zero. And so there's this exponential decay. I do have some notes on that. But notice that there is a deviation here. Um, it can be because the op amp is not ideal, but also an LT spice um, transient simulations when you just give it a uh, Laplace Trans, uh, a Lapl uh, transfer function, right? Sometimes it there's errors that creep in. And then one final thing. So yeah, I just yeah, you can see it starts high and then it and then it settles. All right, that's what I was trying to show. I want to go back here.
Oops. Okay. So this is working fairly well. Now, high pass filters will always, they will stop working at some point because the op amp itself is a low pass filter that you can't really control. All right. So now I should, um, I take away the Omega knot, put it in an S. I'm just going to keep the names the same. All right. And you can see a deviation. And, and in a weird way, the gain is going up. Um, that is because there is some complex circuitry in there to get a gain of uh, 30, I mean, a gain bandwidth of 30 megahertz. And if I want to see what's going on at a higher frequency, I can just increase that, All right? And so there's this peak, but then eventually it turns into a low pass. So really, it's only high pass in that range. The circuit is working as well as possible. You could try to find one with a higher gain bandwidth, but at some point, right, um, your high pass filters going to stop working. So that should cover every problem uh, that you run into. And in general, yes, switching back to an LT1630 will fix everything, but you should really try your op amp from your specification first. All right. And that should be that.